Hello, everybody. Welcome to Stories with Sapphire Live. I am Sapphire Sandalo. Oh, before we move on, I feel like my, my screen is not even, is it? Okay, and my bangs are weird. Oh, we're off to a great start, everyone. Well, happy Wednesday. If this is your first time joining me, welcome to the live stream. I get a lot of emails and messages um, from people all over the world and sometimes you know stories don't always make it into a podcast or a YouTube video so I want to do these live streams so that I can hang out with you guys live and read some of your stories that may not make the show um, if you want to submit your own story or if you have a question if you want to reach me in any way shape or form you can by sending an email to this email address right here stories with sapphire at gmail.com oh man there's a comment from pride player you've aged so well <laughs> why do you say that like i'm 65 <laughs> i'm 33 <laughs> i think most people don't really know how old i am um wow Anyways, well, that put me in a weird headspace. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> so today I pulled up some stories and then I want to try something new at the end. Maybe, uh, I want to start ending every live stream by pulling a tarot card and, uh, you know, just it'll be like a nice little send off a little message, something for us to think about before we go about the rest of our day. I, Anata, you are just fine. <laughs> I know I'm fine. It's just like a funny thing to see someone say you've aged so well when I am not old. <laughs> All right. Um. All right. Our first story comes from... Let's see. Can I say your name? I don't know. <clears throat> it's called do you want to play hi at the sapphire i've been listening to your podcast for about a year now and i thought this coming valentine's day teddy bears are all around and i might as well share my story about it my aunt has an old stuffed toy we considered it antique since it's been around for many years my cousin and i were playing and we're playing on an on a oh no i'm tripping up my words my cousin and i were playing on a rolled up foam we're just going in and out of it, and the teddy bear was on the other side of it, and I playfully asked it a question. Do you want to play with us? Then I left, and I go back in again, and this time, I didn't exactly know what to feel, because the teddy bear waved at me. I immediately ran to my grandmother and said what happened, but she said it's just the rat who did it. I also told my mom what happened, and she said it's an angel. Then I told my cousin about it and I was shocked because she said the toy said hi to her. A few years after, we used that story to scare our young cousins and niece. And we often joke about it until this past year, my mother bought a big teddy bear and the fear and the memories began crashing down again. I didn't touch or even look at it because every time I did, it felt like it was staring back at me. Hoping to listen to more stories, Jessa. Thank you for that email, Jessa. Um, you know, that story actually reminds me of a story I told for something scary a very long time ago. It's the one that seriously sticks with me to this day. I'm pretty sure that the girl who sent it to me was messing with me, but I just remember how afraid I felt in the moment. And it's if anyone here... Uh, remembers that episode it was the one with Rosalita the bear because <laughs> that girl she sent me all these videos of her bear with the voice and I was like I I was so confused the bear like took over the chat at some point and I'm like okay this girl's like messing with me but it felt so real never looked at uh, teddy bears the same way again Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Jessa. Let's move you to the red column. Uh, 
All right, this one's a little longer. One from, I'll say that at the end in case I cannot see your name. <clears throat> and just a reminder, this is live. I don't read these ahead of time, so I'm going to trip up and I apologize that these are not, um, these streams are not as polished as what you are used to seeing. But you know what? Sometimes, sometimes. All right. You guys hear that siren? Man, I have this expensive ass sound booth and you can still hear things outside. It's very annoying. <clears throat> I grew up in Azusa and went to Catholic school. I've had a few spooky stints happen to me. Here's one. Every weekend morning when I was eight, my mom and 16 year old sister and I would drive to the dairy. To the dairy? Dairy Queen? Oh, is the dairy something? Sorry, I get tripped up on like the dumbest things. Um, every weekend morning when I was eight, my mom and 16 year old sister and I would drive to the dairy, grab an ice cream and drive around the canyon, listening to music and gossiping. We would turn back right before heading too far up the mountain and then get ready to start whatever we had planned for the day. This was about a 10 minute drive from our home, but if you walked it, it would take a good 20 minutes. Our home was in a suburb and not near the canyon, hence the drive. Close, but not too close. The dairy was a drive through liquor store at the bottom of the canyon. Okay, it's a liquor store. In the middle of the street was a huge dirt patch before heading up to the canyon. This one day, we noticed a woman with no shoes, pink torn pants, and wild hair running in circles on this dirt patch. She sees us and starts to run after our car. This was before cell phones. Looking back, we should have called the police, but we just kept driving, figuring it was someone having a moment. However, it really unnerved all of us, and we decided to go to the mall instead of the canyon drive that day. Oh my god, did you hear that? That was my, my throat. I needed to use the bathroom, but my mother said the mall was too far to wait. Sorry. I needed to use the bathroom, but my mother said the mall was too far to wait. She insisted we drive straight to our house so I could use it. I was too scared to get out of the car to go into my house, but my mom insisted we were safe. The woman was barefoot at the dirt patch and couldn't have made it to where we lived on foot so rapidly, much less have the ability to know where we lived. My eight-year-old self couldn't get out of the car even though we were parked right in front of my house. Only sidewalk and a lawn between me and the safety of the front door. I was frozen. But my mom insisted, get out and use the bathroom. As I opened my car door, the woman came running down the street. She stopped in front of me, shocked at seeing me too. I jumped into the car and she continued to run down the street. We were all stunned and scared and drove directly to the mall, sans bathroom, to get a change of scenery. After an afternoon of shopping and a nice meal, the scary lady seemed to be a silly story and a distant memory. The 90s mall scene could do that to you. Retail therapy. So we got home several hours later, and my grandmother calls my mom on our landline. She tells my mom the weirdest thing happened to her that day. A woman with no shoes, torn pink pants, and wild hair broke into the or broke into their grandfather's garage. What? Sorry, the, the wording's weird here. Hair broke into their garage that afternoon and was playing with the garage tools. Not only did this woman run after my car by the canyon, make it to my house the same time we did in a car via barefoot, but she landed in my grandparents' backyard who lived down the street and around the corner. It gets weirder. My grandparents called the police to get her. She was a patient from a mental institution that had recently closed by the canyon. Her name was Kathy. Before I was born, my father's mother died in a mental institution by starving herself to death, and her name was Kathy. I'd always heard stories about Kathy, my grandmother, and I always envisioned these stories with the same eerie feeling that woman gave me. Even as I type this, I get that same feeling. Maybe it was coincidence, or maybe it was my grandmother coming to say hi in her own spooky way. Whoa, what? So you think that what you saw was actually the ghost of your grandmother? 
Did you ever see any photos of her? I feel like that would be really interesting to compare. Wow. Ooh. That was a... That was wild. Wait. Huh? What does your comment say? I remember Kathy. I used to see her. Oh, you know Kathy. Frosted Flakes 78 has also seen Kathy. So not a ghost, <laughs> just a person who runs around barefoot near the dairy. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, who sent this? Nita Marie. All right. Let's see here. Let's put that there. That's so fascinating that you also know this person. If you're talking about the same person, that's crazy. Okay, <clears throat> this one is called, it has no name, okay. Hi, Sapphire. I have a brief and mildly embarrassing story to share about when I was a child. I've thought about it many times over the years, but it wasn't until recently that I've come to recognize it for what I believe it was, a near-death experience. This was back in the mid-90s when TikTok did not exist, but unfortunately, the pass-out challenge, or choking game already did. I can't recall exactly how my friend and I heard about it, but 10-year-olds seem to have a unique ability to latch onto mischief that might alleviate boredom. This was our chosen game for a period of time, which makes me cringe in my adult sensibility to remember. We attempted to play the game multiple times and were unsuccessful, but for the sake of not passing instruction onto others, I'll leave exact details out for the final time when it did. What I can share is that one moment my eyes were wide open and I was breathing deeply and the next moment I was somewhere else entirely. I was myself, but somehow I was aware that I was the adult version of myself. The bowl haircut and wire-framed eyeglasses that were my signature look at that age were gone. And instead, I had long hair and a woman's body. I was barefoot and wearing a white slip dress running as fast as I could down a dark, narrow hallway. I felt like maybe I should be scared, but I wasn't scared at all. I was only focused on running towards the end of this hallway. At the end of the hall was a door with bright light beaming out from under the frame, and I desperately wanted to reach it and fling the door open. I didn't know what was on the other side, but I knew I wanted to be there and that I was in a race to reach it. It felt like time was moving in slow motion, or somehow moving against me, like trying to run underwater. I never reached the door to open it, and the next thing I knew, I saw my friend's face above me, and I was slumped on the floor. She said to me, You were faking it, weren't you? Your eyes rolled to the back of your head, and then you fell down. I was quite disoriented and didn't know what else to say, so I mumbled, Mm-hmm. And we never spoke about it again. Fortunately, we never played it again, either. When I listen to stories about the paranormal or the mysterious unknowns in this world now, I often think about this memory. I don't know if I dreamed or hallucinated it, but I can't help but remain curious about what I would have found if I had reached the door and opened it. I guess fortunately for my adult self, now writing this letter, I did not. Thank you for your podcast. Whoa, Beth. Thank you, Beth, for sharing that. Um, not embarrassing. We all did weird stuff when we were children. I think I remember that game. Um, I don't think I ever successfully played it because I'm too scared. But no one played that game. All right, here we go. What time is it? Five or six. Perfect. <clears throat> All right, so this one's called, I don't know why I keep saying things are called things. They don't have names sometimes. <laughs> All right, you ready for your next story? <clears throat> to preface, I am a witch, a young male practitioner of witchcraft. This story is from one of the darker times of my life. During 2020, towards the end of the year, the dreaded school exams were drawing near. I have never been someone who studies or prepares, and this time was no different. 
However, this time my parents told me that if I failed anything, I would lose a plethora of privileges, electronic devices, trips, hanging out with friends, and my phone, which connected me to my friends and provided endless learning opportunities to work on my witchcraft knowledge. Now I studied a bit. It wasn't anything major, however, and shouldn't have even resulted in a pass. The night before, I was desperate and emotionally distraught from my study group, which wasn't helping. I put my knowledge of Luciferian magic to use and wrote a letter. This letter was to an entity known as Payman, currently known as a Goetic demon. I'm sorry, sorry if I'm mispronouncing any of these words. Now, I believe that demons, demons are not what they are in the Bible, but rather entities whose energies are more in tune with humanity and the darker side of the scales. This letter was extensive. It was a contract or pact offer to the entity asking for access to their knowledge so I could pass my exams. I finished it off by signing it, then placing a good deal of blood on the letter as the first step of an offering. Now, I usually don't brag or boast about supernatural experiences, but the next morning when I woke, I lit a small fire in my cauldron. Part of the pact was that payment would allow the letter to be destroyed only after it had been completed. I set the letter in the fire and was absolutely bamboozled when it simply sat there. The edges got a little covered in soot, but the paper was not burning at all. When the fire ran out of fuel, the letter was pretty much untouched, which I took as a sign that the pact was accepted. Later on, I stashed that letter in my bag and made my way to exams. In all honesty, I don't remember much of the exams. Whether this is because they were boring or something supernatural was afoot, I'm not sure. As I took each exam, starting with math, things popped into my head like a voice was saying them, but inside my mind. And I saw flashes of formula. Not physically, but as if my mind was taking pictures in my head of the test with the correct formula. During my English exam, it was like someone else was writing. I quite literally felt like my body was simply on autopilot. During the final exam, science, I felt a strong presence guiding me, as if I was in the room with a stern teacher who was giving me notes and information on the exam questions. Later that day, I bought the items I promised Payman, Damon of Knowledge and Secrets, and laid them on a table as an offering. Then I poured a glass of sparkling grape juice, as a minor I cannot purchase wine, and whispered secrets into it, things that I myself only knew or only close friends knew. Recently, one said, friend made a, pa made a pact with the very same demon for knowledge of secrets. That night he dreamt of a figure who he said fluidly shifted from one gender to the other back and forth, who came to him and told him something he thought was totally made up in his dreams. It was about this person who had a crush on him. Me and the person were the only ones who knew, and when my friend told me this in a joking tone, I quite literally dropped a bowl of cereal onto myself in the kitchen that morning. I'm a believer, but when things like this happen, I'm always taken by surprise. Whoa, that was a journey. <laughs> um, thank you, Blake, for sending that. Um, you know, something that I have come to realize lately, or not, it's just something I'm thinking about more often. When movies, because payment is used in the movie Hereditary, and a lot of movies will use names of real demons. But the thing about that is when you say a demon's name, it is in a way a conjuring spell. It's just like how when someone says your name, you, you come, right? You come over. Um, and it's kind of like the same. And so I find it really fascinating when these demons' names almost become, I don't know if repurposed is the right word. But like what I like, I want to know what does that do? Like now that the collective consciousness, they're saying this name all the time or they're thinking this name, but they're thinking something else. Like what does, I don't know. That's something I, I want to study somehow. 
<laughs> I don't know. But now I'm like, with fictional stuff, I'm like, I gotta be careful. This is serious, man. Now I sound like pff, my, oh, okay, I'll not say it. Okay, well, thank you, Blake. I think we have, you know what? Let's see, how many did we read? Okay, oh, was that all I prepped? All right, cool. All right, guys, Um, it's time for a tarot reading. Oh, Kingpin55, why don't you have bots or mods here? I have uh, mods in on the YouTube side. I think, you know, it's been so long since I've streamed on Twitch that I think I did have people who moderated. I don't think they're around anymore, though. But we'll find them. Okay. So, I'm going to pick a card, and then that will be our message for the rest of the day, okay? Here's one. All right. Yo! <laughs> um, low key, that like hella scared me. I was not expecting this card. That's really weird, huh? That's really weird that like I was just talking about demons being conjured in the world and then I pulled a freaking devil card <laughs> so devil card is not necessarily a bad thing all it means is um I mean this is the thing about tarot it's like it's all about context but let's see how I can do this um so the devil is just a reminder that um it can mean a couple different things one that maybe um you are wow sorry I'm, I'm totally drawing a blank right now guys um one is that maybe you need to have more fun <laughs> in your life maybe you are um denying yourself of earthly pleasures um you know maybe you're working too hard maybe you're taking yourself too seriously the devil can show up and be like yo it's okay loosen up it's okay to have fun. Um, another interpretation is that um, you are tied to something that you don't realize is something that you can you have the power to let go of. Because uh, see, there's these people, they're chained, but their chains are very loose. They could easily slip them off. So it's a matter of perspective. It's taking a step back and being like, hang on a second. Why am I chaining myself to this thing? Still just creepy, right? <laughs> that was pretty weird. That was pretty weird. All right, that's our, that is what I will leave you with today. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Um, this was fun. I do this every Wednesday, 5.30 Pacific Standard. I stream it on Twitch, and then the very next morning, I repost it to YouTube. So, hey, if you missed the live stream, never fear. It is posted the very next day onto YouTube, and you can watch it then. And just a reminder, if you want to send in your own story or email, send it to storieswithsapphire at gmail.com. All right. Uh, Ma'ayong gabi'i akong amig... Crap. <laughs> um, akong manga higala, which is good night, my friends. And uh, yeah, take care till next week.